3.2 a polynomial function function and <coughs> their graphs. Okay, so last time we start for this section, uh, I give like a general idea for the polynomial function. I give the definition for the polynomial function. So the polynomial function, let me repeat what I said last time, polynomial function, polynomial function of degree n is a function is a function of the form is a function of the form b of x equal a n x n plus a n minus one x n minus one plus dot plus a one x plus a zero. I said a n a n minus one and a one and a zero. All of them are coefficients, and this thing here is called a leading term. This here is called leading term and this is called constant term so this is the constant term this is the leading term a n only a n is called the leading coefficients. Let me give a different color. So A and only this one here is called the leading coefficient. And here A0 also is called the constant coefficient okay so this is the uh, polynomial function as a function of this form okay uh, now we're going to the graph basic polynomial function. So last time I talked about these things, but I'm going to give example this time. So a graphing, graphing basic uh, polynomial function. So last time I talked about the basic polynomial function, like for example, f of x equal x square, or like for example, <coughs> uh, g of x equal x, or for example, uh, any even here function like uh, s of x equal x to the four. Uh, d of x equal x to the six and even all of them are polynomial here g of x equal x is a line function and another function is q of x equal x to the three is uh, also a polynomial function but has odd power uh, here like uh, y of x 
equal x to the, for example, 5. <coughs> Last time I said all these graphs, all this function has the same graphs, but the difference a little bit in the in the graph. So this one here like uh, has open, more open at around the, around the interval zero to one. It will be like close to the x-axis, the same things here. Here is a line. The graph for this one will be like something aligned because it's a linear. And for this one has the same graphs. So the graph in general here, let me put like small graphs. <coughs> so here the graph for this one. The graph for this one here. And here the graph for this. Most of them the same. Are similar, but not like exactly uh, graphs. So here for it's a parabola something like this. This is x squared, x to the four, like more open. x to the six is more open. Uh, here is a line. So the line be look like uh, this. For this one is uh, gonna be like a uh, graph like this. Same things for y of x equal x to the five would be like more open around the, the zero, like something like this. Can you use different colors to explain more here, like will be more open, I mean, like this. This is the function x to the four. <clears throat> here is the function, for example, x to the five, and the blue one is x to the three. Here, x to the three. The blue one here, x to the two. Okay, any question for these things up to here? Okay. Now, by using this graphs, we're going to use to graph different function by using the transformation as we learned before in section two point, uh, I think two point six. So the example now, by using the transformation method, graph, the polynomial function, poly functions. <sighs> so first example is uh, graph the function one b of x equal minus x to the three. Second one q of x equal x minus two square. Third one. Uh, that's it. Just to, um, I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take only these two functions. So for the first function, who will do the first one? How can I graph the the polynomial function as we learned before? Uh, for the graph uh, p of x equal minus x to the cube. 
How is the graph look like? By using the transformation. Or tell me the, the original function for this function, for the polynomial function. What is the original function here? <coughs> what is the original function of x? As we learned from 2.6. x cubed. x cubed. This is my original function. So I have to graph this function. If I modify a little bit in this function, I can find like, how can I find the, like, if I do like some modification for this function, then I'm going to get a function similar to the B of X. So I'm going to multiply both sides by minus one. Multiply here by minus one, I get minus O of X equal minus x cube. So I can say b of x is equal to minus x cube and this is equal minus o of x. So by using the transformation from before, to graph the function b of x, I have to graph the original function o of x, then I have to reflect it around the x-axis. Why? Because the minus is outside the function. Here, let me use different colors. So here, the, my original function is x to the three. I multiply both sides by minus one minus one, so I get minus O of X equal minus X to three. So the original B of X equal minus X three is equal to the minus O of X. So now to graph this function, I have to graph the original function is X cube. So my original function look like this, X to the cube. How I know? By this, X to the cube, X to the five, X to the, any odd power be similar to each other. So this is the function here of x equal x to the cube three. Now to graph the function b of x, I have to reflect the original function by using this property around the x axis. Why around the x axis? By using the rules in 2.6, section 2.6 for reflection. Minus O of X means we have to reflect the original function around the X axis. So I'm going to reflect this one around the X axis. So this is my mirror here. Everything reflecting around this mirror. So this is mean the graph is something like this. This is my B of X. So the black one is O of X, X to the cube. The red one, the blue one is B of X is equal minus X to the cube. Any question for the first graph? Any questions so far? So now for the second one. So my original function here, what is my original function? What is my original function for the second one? What is it? <clears throat> yes, it's x squared. This is my original function. 
how can I modify these things such that they give me a function similar to the Q of X? I have to plug inside this function X minus two. When I plug X minus two, they give me Q of X minus two. Here's O. This is O. And here is O. <coughs> o of X minus two is equal X minus two square. This mean I have to grab the original function. So now O of X two minus O of X minus two equal this things is exactly to the Q of X. So my Q of X that's equal X minus two squared is equal to the O of X minus two. This is mean to grab this function, I have to grab the original one, O of X, X squared. So this is the original function here, this is a parabola. I grab the original function. This is O of X equal X square. Then I have to shift the original one two units to the right. To the right, yes. So because I have X minus two, this is mean I have to shift the original function two units to the right. So here is zero, zero. You give me here two and zero. Here is one and one, for example be like around here. So everything will be shifted to the right. So the new graph would be like something like this. This is my Q of X. So this is like a review from like previous section. If you go to the previous section, you can like remember every all this uh, transformation uh, graphs. Any questions so far? What's your question? Okay, so now let's go to the new things. It's called the end end behavior. This is the most important things for this section. End. behavior. Okay. So let me explain what is the mean of the end behavior and how is the end behavior help me to graph the polynomial function. So the end behavior and so suppose first of all, I have a polynomial of this form. Suppose my polynomial function, let my polynomial function as B of X equal A N X N plus A N minus one xn minus one up to a zero. This is my polynomial function. No, I mean like let my polynomial function, suppose I have a polynomial function. I can like using like my polynomial function, suppose I have a polynomial function. Here, suppose I have, if you don't like this one, suppose. Uh, 
my polynomial function as p of x equal a n x n plus a n minus one x n plus one up to a zero. This is my polynomial function. Now I'm going to study the end behavior for this polynomial function. So the end behavior here, the end <coughs> behavior determine the end behavior determined by two things. By number one, I have to look for two things. The degree for the polynomial, <coughs> degree, and, and second thing is by the sign of an. An this an. This is my a. So again, suppose my uh, polynomial function look like this. To study the end behavior, I need two things. The degree for n, degree, I mean like n, so the degree for the polynomial is n. Second thing is the sign of a n. Is it positive or negative? What is the sign of a n? Two things I need. So let me let me now give you the uh, the rules. So the the rules for the end behavior. Suppose my b of x has odd degree. What is the odd numbers? What is the odd numbers? What does the mean of odd degree? when it's raised to a when, when what, the exponent is an odd number that what does that mean of odd numbers like in general when somebody told you odd number what does that mean of odd one three five seven yes exactly yeah. like one three five seven nine eleven this all of this are odd numbers what is the even numbers Even, what is the meaning of even numbers? Uh, zero, two, four, six, eight. Exactly, <laughs> all of these are even. Two, four, zero is not even, is not odd. You cannot determine exactly. But I can said two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, all these are even numbers. So suppose my B of X, the polynomial, has odd degree. The degree is the highest exponent of the function. Suppose it has odd degree. Odd, again, like one, three, five, like this. And for this one, suppose also a n, a n this one is positive, positive numbers. This means the end behavior, I can say the, yeah, the end, behavior uh, will be given as like this. If x goes to infinity and if x goes to minus infinity. So if x goes to infinity, this is mean y will be goes to infinity. If x goes to minus infinity, this mean y goes to minus infinity. I will explain this by the graph to make it like more easier for you. So the graph of a polynomial, this is my polynomial, <clears throat> this is the Cartesian plane. Suppose my polynomial has odd degree and a n is positive. So the graph would be something like this. Graph would be something like this. Down, points, I don't care for the points, and down again. So this is the graph for P of X has odd degree 
a n is greater than zero positive positive when x goes to infinity look when x goes to infinity this is, and the process this is x goes to infinity this is mean when x become larger like one two three four five infinity also in the same time y goes to infinity look y goes up to infinity when x goes to minus infinity look x goes to minus infinity and the same time y goes to minus infinity goes down that's why you have to know when i told you what's the end behavior for a polynomial has odd degree and a n is positive you have to tell me when x goes to infinity y goes to infinity when x goes to minus infinity y goes to minus infinity sorry professor when you say odd degree do you mean the 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 degree of the leading the leading polynomial is odd yes exactly for example b of x equal x to the three plus okay. plus two x meta for example okay. something like that this is this polynomial has odd degree the leading has degree three the highest degree is a three for all uh, terms in the polynomial now for the second case this is when a n is positive so what about if a n is negative a n is negative numbers here let me give you example uh, for this one like uh, here example something like this uh, three no i mean b of x b of x equal uh, five x to the power three plus four x squared plus five this is a polynomial has odd degree is three and five is the leading coefficient is positive now for the second one a n is negative the end behavior is when x goes to infinity and when x goes to minus infinity so when x goes to infinity y goes to minus infinity when x goes to minus infinity y goes to to infinity i explain this by the graph look to the graph it's my graph so i need two things degree sign of a suppose my graph something like this First time. No, it's not nice. I don't like it. Something like this. That was good. So look now, when x goes to infinity, I mean like when x goes become bigger number, like 10, 100, 200, 3000, all y goes to minus infinity become like small numbers. Look, the curve goes down. Same things for when x goes to minus infinity. When x goes to minus infinity, all the y's is become large goes up this is what i mean for the end behavior so this is my y-axis and this is x-axis here the x-axis y-axis example for this one example same like this one but negative five b of x 
equal negative 5x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5. Make sense? Any questions so far? Any questions so far? For the B has odd degree. Okay. Now B of X has even degree. Even like two, four, six, eight. The same things. If A N is positive, the end behavior When x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. When x goes to minus infinity, y goes to infinity. I give you example and I give you the graph. Example, uh, x, b of x, equal, for example, x squared plus uh, 5x plus 1. Has even degree is 2, and a of x is greater than 0, positive. 1 is positive. When a n is negative, so when a n is negative, is greater less than 0, so the end behavior when x goes to infinity, when x goes to minus infinity, here y goes to minus infinity, and here the same things y goes to minus infinity. Let me do a graph to show you what what's happening exactly here. Uh, let me give you the example for the do the graph. So example, the same things, but minus the leading coefficient b of x equal minus x squared, for example, plus 5x plus 1. Now the graph. So the graph for the first one. Here's the graph for the second one. So the function has even degree and a n is positive. So the function look like this. Something like that goes down. It's close up. So look, when x goes to infinity, like become x larger, look, when x goes to infinity larger, when x become larger, y goes to infinity. When x becomes smaller minus infinity, y goes to infinity. This is the end behavior. Same things for the second one. The graph has a n negative. So the graph looks like this. So when x goes to infinity, y goes to minus infinity, goes down. When x goes to minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity, down. Any questions so far? Anyone has a question? Same things here, minus infinity, infinity, goes up, goes up. So 
same things here goes to infinity function goes up goes to minus infinity function goes down minus infinity same things here minus infinity goes up here goes down Or let me give you example for what I said for all this. Here x axis and here is x axis. Anyone has a question for the end behavior here? Is it clear for all of you? Now the example is find the end behavior for d of x equal uh, minus eight five x cube or uh, five to the Power five plus two x square minus four x. Who will do this one? What is the end behavior for this polynomial function? Or give me like the step. How can I think for this one? The degree is odd, so they're, you know, y is going to go up and down, right? Okay. And what is uh, the leading uh, coefficient? Is even or odd? Uh, the, it's, no, I mean, like, it's uh, positive or negative? First negative. Of all. negative. Negative. Thanks. So here I can say the leading term. This is the leading term. I'm looking to the leading term. This is the first step is minus five x to the five. Now I check the sign of the leading coefficient and the degree for the exponent. So degree for the polynomial. So first of all, the degree is Five. This is mean odd. And the leading coefficient is minus five. Is let me change different, uh, let me use different color and uh, different number. For example, board six here. And here I put six. So the leading coefficient is minus six. This is mean negative number. Odd and negative go back. Here, odd and negative. When x goes to infinity, y goes to minus infinity. When x goes to minus infinity, y goes to infinity. This is the end behavior would we'll work with this example because we have odd, we have negative. This is the negative. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to minus infinity as x goes to 
minus infinity y equals to infinity this is the answer any question this is the end behavior Just you have to write down the leading term, the degree, the, si the sign of the coefficient uh, leading, then we go back to the rules. One, two, three, four. We have four rules. Make sense? Any questions so far? Anyone has a question? How I think to find the end behavior? Okay, so now let's go to the how to graph the polynomial. Now we're going to learn how to graph the polynomial. So to graph the polynomial, we have four steps. So here, graph polynomial. function. So graphing polynomial function. So we have four step. The first step, we have to find the zeros. Second step, you have to find that you have to test the point. Third step, you have to find the end behavior. Fourth one, you should to graph it. You graph. This is the last step. Example to explain the steps. The question is graph uh, the polynomial function p of x equal x plus two x minus one, x minus three. Let's do it together, step by step. The first things we have to find the zeros for this polynomial. What is the zeros for this polynomial? Negative two, positive one, and positive three. Nice, thank you. It is negative two, positive one, and positive three. How you know this? By using the first chapter in this book. As we learn the first chapter and we spent like two months to find the zero for polynomial, something like this. If I have a polynomial or I have a function, Like something like this, uh, f of x equal mm, x minus one times, or x minus a, I mean, x minus a times x minus b. So the zeros are x minus a equals zero or x minus b equals zero then x equal a by adding a for both sides or x equal b by adding b for both sides same things here exactly the same things 
nothing different. This is from chapter one here. Now go back to the chapter three, this chapter. To find the zero for this polynomial, same idea, x minus a, x minus b, we make the first parenthesis equal zero. So this is mean x plus two equals zero. They give me x equal minus two. Second thing is x minus one equals zero. Give me x equal one and x minus three equals zero, which is mean x equal three. So this is the first zero, second zero, third zero. Now, second step, find the test point. This mean number two, test point. I have to write down like I make, uh, uh, make the real line like this. Infinity to infinity, yeah. This is my real line. Here is in this real line, I have, I have to put my zeros, it's negative two. And one. And three. And here I have to write down the sign. What is the mean of sign? I have to pick any element, any number between this number and I check. I have to check. For example, what number would you like to use here? Greater than three. Four. Four, take the four. I plug the four inside this and check what the sign. Four plus two is six. Four minus one, so I get six. Four minus one. 18. What's four minus one is 18. Four minus three. one is three. 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 And four minus three one. is one. So six times three is 18 times one is say 18. So the 18 has a positive. So this mean all these numbers here is a positive. This makes sense, is it clear? Now, pick any number between one and three. Two. Two. Plug the two inside this to check the sign. Two plus two is four. Two minus one is one. Two minus three is minus four. one. So the answer is negative four. Thank you. So this is mean here is negative. Everything here is negative. Now pick any number between minus two and one. Zero. Zero, nice. So I'm going to take the zero. Here is zero. Plug the zero inside this one. What I get? Zero plus two. Two, two, two. times negative one times negative three will be positive six. Negative one and negative three. We are like negative six. Negative six? Yes. Positive six. Because negative times negative is a positive. Yeah, positive. So plus three, six. So here will be positive. Now pick any number is less than minus two. Negative three. Negative three. I plug the negative three inside the formula, inside the function. 
Negative negative three negative plus two is negative one, right? What's it twenty four? Negative three, negative three, negative four here. Negative six. Negative six. Three, negative six. And the answer is positive or negative? Yeah, positive. Neg no, or negative, negative. Negative, <laughs> negative. Because negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative. And six times four is 24. So the answer is negative 24. So here is negative. Okay. So negative, positive, negative, positive. Nice. Now, third step, end behavior. What is the end behavior here for this for the model? So to find the end behavior, I have to multiply this polynomial. I don't have to multiply everything. Just multiply the variable x times x times x. x times x times x is x a cube. So the leading term here is x a cube plus x a cube. So the third step here, number three, the leading term. What is the leading term? Is x times x times x. You multiply this by this one by this one. This is the only one you have to multiply. So x times x times x is x cubed. And here we have positive one. So we have like one x cubed. So a n, the leading the leading uh, uh, coefficient is one, is positive. And the degree is, is three, odd. And here is positive. So what does that mean, both odd and positive? go back odd positive when x goes to infinity y goes to infinity when x goes to minus infinity y goes to minus infinity so when x goes to infinity when x goes to minus infinity here y goes to infinity y goes to minus infinity. All this, I bring it from the previous slide, okay? Any questions so far? Anyone has a question from the first step, second step, and third step? Anyone has a question? Okay, let's do the fourth step. Let's no questions. The last step is a graph. So by using one and two and three, I can graph. So in the graph, I have to put this zero, minus two and one and three. Minus two. And one and three. Minus two and one and three. So here, three and above is positive. This is mean the graph will be look like this. So 
from 1 to 3 is negative, the blue one. This is mean will be like this. Negative will be under the x-axis. From minus 2 to the 1 is positive, up of the x-axis. Under minus 2 is negative. This is mean down of the x-axis. And also by using the third step, the end behavior, when x goes to infinity, look, x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So when x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity, look, when x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity same things for minus when x goes to minus infinity y goes to minus infinity so my graph is true my graph is right any question for this graph anyone has a question Okay, so it's clear, right? For all of you, how to graph? Yes. Anyone except... Uh, or not? Angel? Yeah, so now it's... Yeah, okay. Uh, so I give you exercise for you if you want to practice. The exam now for student, this is for you. Uh, graph the function, the polynomial function. This is b of x. Equal minus two x cube x to the four mi minus x cube plus three x. This is exercise for you. So let me give you just the hints how to think about this one. First of all, the zeros, you have to factor this one. You know how to factor this one? Like I give you just the hints. I'm not going to do it exactly. So the zeros here. Is B of X. You have to factor it. You know how to factor it? What is the greatest common factor between all of these? Look to the first one, second term, first term, second term. Negative x. It's positive x. Or you can put it negative x, but it's, I prefer x positive. Right? If I take x as the greatest yep. common factor, so I give me minus 2x. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Here. A cube, but with but the cube is still hard for you. So here I'm going to put it two. That will be more easier for you, because we did not take it for the cube. So what is the greatest common factor now? X squared. X squared. X squared. Sorry. So now it become more easier. What's the remaining here? Minus two x square minus x plus 3. What is the factor for this one? Put 
what is the factor? Anyone has, you know, by using chapter one? You know what's the vector for this one? Can we factor by grouping? We by multiply what? that by grouping, factoring by grouping. Okay, what is that? What do I get? So multiply negative two times three will be negative six. Um the two um factor that add to negative adds will be negative three and two, and that will be uh negative two s squared. Yes. Um uh, minus Plus, wait, plus two X, at, S okay. minus okay. three X plus three. Okay, perfect. So what, what I get here inside? Minus, what is it? Minus two X, minus three. And here I get X and minus, the, the, plus minus one. This is the factor. Try minus two x times x is minus two x squared. Minus two x times one is minus is plus two x. Minus three x, I get here x. And minus times minus is positive. This is work. This is work for this one. Now we have to find the zeros. So the zeros are x squared equals zero is x equals zero. This is the first zero. Second zero is making this one equal zero. So minus two X minus three equals zero. So this is mean minus two X equal three. So this is mean X equal minus three over two. And the third zero is X minus one equals zero. So this is mean X equal positive one. So this is the first zero. This is the second one. And this is the third zero. This is the first step. Second step, we have to draw the line and you have to put the zeros on this line. So the first zero is zero here. This is the second zero is one, but here. Third one is minus three over two, like around here. Minus three over two. Now you have to, to pick any element is greater than one, any element between zero and one, any element between minus three over two and zero. So let's do it. Any number is greater than one. For example, pick, uh, let's take one, like, let's take four, for example, four. When you plug the four inside this one, they will give me like negative numbers. Check, pick any numbers greater than one. Or take two. Two, two. two. for example, two, yes. So two squared is four. Two minus one is one. So positive times positive is positive. Here, negative two times two is negative four. Four minus three, three. Negative seven. Negative. So negative times positive times positive is negative. negative. Okay, now pick any number between zero and one. One half. One half. So one half. You plug the one half inside this one. One I four. Positive. 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 Negative. Negative. And here also negative. negative one. So negative negative times negative times positive. Negative positive. I'm just giving you the hints. I'm not. That's why I'm not. I'm doing. I'm doing this example fast. I give you just a hint. If you want to check, you have to go and do the same steps like here, exactly the same step. I'm doing this one fast because just I'm doing. I'm giving you the hints how to do this one. Negative one. Now, now pick any number. Here is negative one. 
and like negative one is around here. You plug the negative one inside this one, I get positive, positive, and here negative. Also negative. So I get negative here. I get negative two times here negative. So I get again here positive. Now pick any numbers. Is, this is smaller than three over two. Like for example, uh, negative three. Negative three. The plug the negative three inside this one, they will give you negative. Now the end behavior. The end behavior. So number three, number step number three. And behavior. So what is the leading term? What is the leading term? Negative s, negative two s to the fourth. Exactly. So the leading, leading term is negative two times x to the fourth. So a n is negative two and n the, the degree is four. So this is mean negative numbers and even. What does that mean? So when x goes to infinity and when x goes to minus infinity. So when x goes to infinity, y goes to by using the previous slide, goes to minus infinity, and here also y goes to minus infinity. Go back to the previous slide. This is even and negative. When x goes to infinity, y goes to minus infinity. When x goes to minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity. So in the both case, goes to minus infinity. This is the end of here. Now the last step is a graph. Now we're going to graph by using all these steps. So the graphs now. Minus one, zero, minus three over two. Zero, minus three over two. And here is uh, one. Okay, the first one is the pink color, the pink. The pink here goes to negative. This is mean here, like this. This is negative. Here, yellow between zero and one, positive. So yellow between zero and one. So it goes like this, positive. Then it's like a dark red between minus three over two and zero. This color, like again, positive, something like that. Then is orange less than any number is smaller than minus three over two. So means all the numbers goes down like this. And this is the graph of this function. This is the fourth step. Fourth step is the graphing. Any question? Is it clear? I gave you just the hints. If you want to do it exactly, you have to do step by step. And here you can check step by step. Okay, now let's go to the new section is 3.3. Uh, .3. 3.3 
is dividing polynomial. So this section is small section, just we have to know how to do the long division. So, but before we start starting for the long division, let me give you like a small definition, how to think for the long division. So the long, the long division of polynomials. So first things you have to know, uh, what's the mean of dividing by polynomial? If I have, for example, polynomial p of x over the polynomial q of x, this gonna give me something like, here, not q of x, sorry, is d of x. d of x, p of x over d of x. They're gonna give me like a polynomial a, a q of x, plus a uh, uh, plus uh, remainder. So the remainder would be like something like this, r of x over d of x. So this is the polynomial over polynomial. You have to know here, d of x, this d of x not equal zero. This is important things d of x, this one, not equal zero. Uh, second thing is if I wanna multiply all this, this by d of x, if I multiply everything by d of x, if I multiply everything by d of x, This is gonna give me like multiplying this by d of x, d of x with d of x are cancel each other. So I'm going to get b of x equal q of x times d of x. I mean like d of x before. So d of x times this one plus when you multiply d of x with this one, I get only the r of x because d of x are cancel each other. So this is the polynomial what I have to get. This is the polynomial I'm gonna get. This polynomial are equal exactly to this one. So this one equal to this. Now, this is called here, dividend. This is called here divisor. This is called here quotient. And this one here is the remainder. Okay. Dividend, divisor, quotient, remainder. This will give you example now for long division. Any questions so far for this one? Anyone has a question? Is it clear? Anyone has a question? Okay, let me give you an example. So the example now, uh, divide. Six X square minus 26 X plus 12 divided by
x minus 4. So I'm going to do this one, and next one you're going to help me. So when you're dividing something like that by something like that, First of all, you take this one, the leading coefficient, and the leading coefficient here. You're dividing the leading coefficient 6x squared over x, and you're going to get 6x. You put this one up here. Then you multiply this one by this one, by this polynomial. So 6x times x minus 4 is 6x times x is 6x squared minus 6x times 4 is 24x. Now you subtract. What does it mean of subtract? Here we have minus positive means of subtract changing the positive to negative here and changing the negative to the positive now you do subtract for everything 6x squared minus 6x squared is give me what they cancel each other here minus 26x negative 2 negative 2x x. So x. and this goes down plus 12. This goes down. Now you take the leading again. This is the leading. And you're taking the, this leading and you dividing to each other. So it means minus 2x divided by x. What are you going to get? Minus 2. You put this minus 2 here. Then you multiply. You multiply the minus 2 by this polynomial. Minus 2 times x is minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Minus 2x. And minus 2 times minus 4 is. plus eight. Now you're changing the sign. Negative become positive and the positive become negative. Now minus two X plus two X, they cancel each other. Positive 12, negative eight is, is positive four, right? And this is the final answer. So I can do some more uh, dividing. I stop up to here. So the answer is 6x squared, the dividend minus 26x plus 12 equal this one, x minus 4 times this one, 6x minus two plus four. This is the answer. This is called the dividend. This is called the divisor. This is called the quotient. And this is called the remainder. The remainder. Any questions so far? Anyone has a question? How to do the, the, the dividing? You didn't write a reminder as it should be. The reminder should be plus four over S minus four. Dad. Or you simplify. What's, what is the, what you said? The 
the remainder should be plus four over s minus four. No, no, be because because here. No, hold on. No, because this is look. Go back. We can write it in this way, or we can write it in this way. So if you want to write it in this way, like you said, this way, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be like something like this. I can write it here, or I can, or I can write it in different way. Six uh, x square minus 26 x plus 12 over x minus 2 equal 6x minus 2 plus 4 over x minus 2. You can write it in this way or you can write it in the way I write it before, this one. 6x squared minus 26x plus 12 equal, you multiply everything by x minus two. You multiply everything here by x minus two. You get x minus two times this one plus four. So there is two different ways to write uh, the answer. You can write it by this way or by this way. Both of them are right. This way is similar to this way. I multiply everything here by x minus two. This is what I did. So you can write it in this way or this way. Both of them are right. Whatever you want, you can. Any question? So again, this is true and this is true. As you like, you can write it. Okay, any question? Let me give you another example. Get x to the four plus six x square minus 3x plus 1 divided by 2x square minus x plus 2. So I use it step by step. I take this one divided by this one, then I get the answer I brought here. So 8x square, I mean 8x to the power 4 over 2x square. What I get? 4x square. I put this one here 4x square. I multiply this one by this, by all the terms here. What I get? 4x square times 2x square, they give me. 8x squared, uh, 8x to the power 4, minus 4x cube, plus 4 times 2 is 8, x squared. Now, I change the sign. Here we have positive become negative. Here we become positive. Here we come negative. 
4 x to the power 4 minus 4 x to the power 4, they cancel each other. 6 x squared plus 4 x cubed plus minus. So this goes down 4 x cubed plus Uh, plus x, 6x squared plus minus 8x squared, they give me minus 2x squared. Minus 3x plus 1. Now, we have to take this one, this term, and this term. So 4x or 3 divided by 2x the bar 2, they give me 2x. I will put this one up here, plus 2x. I multiply this one by all the stems. I get 4x cube minus 2x square plus 4x. Now I change the sign. Here become negative become positive, here become negative. So, uh, so 4x square cube minus 4x cubed, they cancel each other. Now, I do add minus 2x squared and plus 2x squared, also they cancel each other. Now, minus 3x minus 4x is minus 7x plus 1. We stop up to here, we cannot continue. Why? Because the degree for x is less than degree for here. So the now the answer is what is the answer? Is eight x to the power four plus six x square minus three x plus one over 2x squared minus x plus 2 is give me the answer 4x squared plus 2x plus the remainder minus 7x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x plus 2. Or if I want to write it a different way, 8x to the power 4 plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1 equal this one, 4x squared plus 2x times this one, 2x squared minus 8 plus 2 plus this one, minus 7x that's fine. Okay, anyone has a question? Uh, sorry, yeah. Is, the, is polynomial long division going to be in our, our exam? Yes. Okay, Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to stop up to here for today. Thank you.